it's not the size that matters. I mean, this is a tiny little stepper motor, but the technology between stepper motors is all the same. You have a stepper motor driver and you have a stepper motor. And you have, of course, some sort of microcontroller that can tell the stepper motor what it should be doing. And I was fortunate enough to, uh, in the city that's close to me at my cabin here, um, there was a little tiny, they call themselves a makerspace. It was really just inside of like a furniture, back of a furniture store. There was this lady who, was selling Arduinos and stepper motors and LEDs. I couldn't believe it. So I went and uh, picked it up and this saves me from having to rush back to my lab to test something because the guys were having some difficulty trying to get something to work. So <laughs> here's what happened. Well, on our bigger robots for our customers, there's uh, people that are using robots that have bigger stepper motors or bigger high precision. And generally those are all through CAN bus. So it's not really the enterprise customers like the industrial guys that we come across that need to use um, microcontrollers with stepper motors and uh, stepper controllers. Generally it's all CAN bus, so it's the hobbyists that come across this. So our first version of the stepper motor had a resolution of you know, 65,535, whatever it is, for uh, the size of an, of, a, of an unsigned int, 16. And we recently updated it to have the full resolution of the software, which is an unsigned, or sorry, a signed 32-bit uh, int, which is 2 billion resolutions. Now, we, normally this would be a constant value. I just put this in here so you'd be able to read it. And in the firmware that would install in the Arduino, we map the data coming in. So let's just go to um, where we set position right here. We map it, the position coming in between zero and that to zero and whatever your resolution is going to be. So what that means is that every stepper motor in your network of stepper motors can have different resolutions. So in the software, if you were to I'll just load the software up real quick. So if you were to move this servo, this stepper servo, which we have set on the Arduino on port V1, so on the Uno on V1, if you were to move it between one and 180 degrees, okay, well, whatever that arbitrary value is that you decide, that one and 180 is actually mapped to um, zero and this. Okay, so it'll be, and, and this number here is um, what we map your one and 180 to. So we map one and 180 to zero and this. So this is min, which is your um, zero degrees, and this is 180, your max, and this is your, your max. So here's what was happening. We were using the map command with signed longs, 32 bit ints, and the craziest thing, we could not get it to work. I couldn't figure it out. And uh, so then I thought to myself, well, let's just change this to like say 65,000, okay? And we'll make them the size of a 16-bit of a int, right? So, and also where it gets the position, we need to map that as well. So I think someplace in here, there it is. We'll just make that 65,000. And then we'll make what it asks for the position. We'll make that 65,000. Okay, so let's program the Arduino. We're going to turn off our stepper motor first. Actually, we just shut this right down because there we go. Because we have to recompile it anyway. Um, what am I missing here? Oh, Yurt mode hasn't been configured. Okay, so we have to configure our stepper mode, which is going to be a four wire half, whatever, doesn't matter. And then our UART mode, we're gonna configure to be right here. Um, we're gonna be a master serial zero because this is just an Arduino. We can't do any networking with it because it only has one UART port. So therefore, if we had a UART that, or a Arduino like a Leonardo or something that had, a, or a micro that had two UARTs on it, then you can chain them together. So you can have like 127 chained together. There we go, programmed. Okay, so now we'll build. Um, first we have to configure what rope, what uh, 
port it's on, port three. There we go. And we're using V1. There we go. Right here, I'll put this over here so you can see it better. So we're gonna be moving the servo or the stepper. So I can move it between one and 180. Okay. So if I put this to position one, and let's take a look at the motor. Now, if I push center, it's gonna to move to 90, which is half of the angle. And you can see it's slowly moving. There we go. Now, if I go backwards from, from 90 to like say 70 and then back to 90, watch what happens. It's moving that way. And then I move back to center. Okay, so now we're gonna move from 90 up to a higher value and then back down to 90 again. So let's see what happens. So we're going up and then we're going back down. <laughs> you see, it doesn't matter which, what direction I, I go, once it gets past 90, it reverses the direction that it was just going. So what that's saying is that our 65,000 value inside of the Arduino is um, being treated as a signed integer. So when it sets the position this long, this what's come out of here is actually turning this into a signed. So I thought to myself, okay, well let's unsign everything. So we'll unsign our long, and then we'll unsign our data that we're reading in. Okay, so we're assembling a 32-bit integer, right? So now, when I pass this in, this will be an unsigned long. So there should be no way that this is being treated as um, a signed integer. So let's go back, disconnect, program, Now that we've done this, what we've done is we've forced it to be unsigned, which means that when I move this from zero to 90, it should be moving one direction. Okay, good. So it's moving from zero to 90. If I move this past 90 upwards, it should continue moving the direction it was just going. So here we go. So let's move from 90 to up higher number. It's going backwards again. That means it's being treated as a signed integer. So this map, even though I'm forcing it to be unsigned, is still being signed. Okay, so let's, I mean, I could bracket and unsign it here if I want to. It's just driving me insane. So I wanted this to have a range of the two billion mark, but that's not gonna work. So this map, for some reason, on this version of this IDE or the compiler, it's constantly giving me a signed, um, it along and then I thought okay well maybe maybe this is not a maybe this is just a 16 bit the move to so I looked up move to move to there it is there's our long so <laughs> we're not dealing with <laughs> with uh within 16s we're dealing with longs which are 32 and this is constantly I don't know how the the compiler is doing this I have no idea but I'm only ever getting signed integers even when I have it set as, a, as an unsigned. I have casted this. So <laughs> I needed to remove this map. So what I ended up doing was remove the map, take the position directly that's red, put it right into the into the into the position that it is, and then take our when we require to uh, to inquiry the position, then I'm just gonna take that and I'm not gonna map it back. So now you're getting a value between what? Between this and, and we can make this our value of a, um, of a int 32.max value. You wanna be able to configure how many stepper positions this thing can maximum go to. So if you go to 180 degrees in arc, you want that to become an, an, a maximum number on here. And you want that per stepper motor. 
because each stepper motor is gonna have a different maximum number of positions. So here's what I ended up doing. Rather than putting the maximum number of positions that you can move to as a constant per Arduino firmware, instead, inside of the config window, I added it inside of here. I created a user control that asks what the number of maximum steps is. So let me show you what I mean by this. So now what I can do is I can specify I want V1 to be a stepper motor and I can specify how many steps this particular motor is gonna get. And I can do that for every single one of them, all 127 of them. So that put the, the map essentially inside of this robot skill and it sends the position to the firmware so that the firmware will have to do uh, no mapping whatsoever. All day I have not been able to figure out why I could not get map and Arduino's compiler to give me a signed long. Just can't not figure it out. So if uh, we take a look now, you'll see here that I'm mapping the position that's being specified between the minimum maximum positions and I'm mapping that to the max servo positions. If you specify 1500 as the max servo positions or stepper motor positions you can get, that's what it's mapping to. So the Arduino code doesn't need to do any mapping. It just takes the value directly and passes it right into the, uh, the, into the set position, which is, again, we saw that already, wherever that is. Set position right here this control to the right, we'll see the servo move, if I move it to the left, the stepper motor will go back. So we're using the stepper motor as a servo, so you can specify how many degrees you want to move it to. And I just have the acceleration and everything set, that's why it kind of goes slow and then fast again. So now that we have this stepper motor working as an actual servo, now we should be able to just use other robot skills to be able to make it do something. So let's add speech recognition, for example. Let's just see if we can talk to it. Add this, configure it. We'll add a new phrase here. We'll just say stepper move right. Use JavaScript, which is my favorite. And I'll just say servo dot Set position. Uh, there it is. And we were using the port was V V1, I believe. And we'll make this position one. We'll copy this. And then this one will be. But you can guess. Stepper move left. And then we'll do uh, JavaScript. And we'll change this from 1 to 180. And save that. Okay. Stepper move left. Stepper move right. Perfect. That's what we want. So <laughs> that took a long time. I don't know why. Stepper, move right. Nope. Stepper, move left. That's right. <laughs> I guess my rights and left are mixed up here. <laughs> there, hold it this way. There, that's that's better. <laughs> so anyway, I don't know why map was, was being like that. <laughs> of course, I did a Google search to see if other people are having the same issue. And as you can see, map seems to be an actual <laughs> nightmare. I don't know why it bit the shed when I tried to use it with longs. I saw some people saying to use long longs, so I made my own map function with long long. I just couldn't get it to work. Well, fortunately, I found a solution, but if you guys have any ideas of why map and all these people who are having issues with map with longs is having issues, um, if you know the reason why, please, please let me know so that I, can, I don't have to deal with this frustration again because I think I'm losing hair over this. All right, I'll see you in the next video.